إلى آثار رحمة الله كيف يحيي الأرض بعد موتها إن ذلك لمحيي الموتى وهو على كل شيء قدير ولئن نرسلنا ريحا فرأوه مصفرا لظلوا من بعده يكفرون فإنك لا تسمع الموتى ولا تسمع الصم الدعاء إذا ولوا مدبرين وما أنت بهاد العمي أن ضلالتهم إن تسمع إلا من يؤمن بآياتنا فهم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate and of his sign is that he sends winds to herald good tidings and that he may give you a taste of his mercy and that ships may sail at his bidding and you may seek his bounty and give thanks to him he sent messengers before you to their respective nations and that they brought clear signs to them then we took retribution from those who acted wickedly it was incumbent on us to support the believers allah sent the winds that stir up clouds and then he spreads them in the sky as he pleases and splits them into different fragments so you see drops of rain pouring down from them he then causes the rain to fall on whomsoever of his servants he pleases immediately they rejoice although before that they were given to despair see then the tokens of allah's mercy how he revives the earth after it it is dead verily he is the one who will revive the dead he was he has power over everything but if we were to send a bad wind and they saw their crops turned yellow they would remain there after disbelievers o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you can not make the dead hear nor you can make the deaf hear your call when they turn back in retreat nor you can guide the blind out of their error you can make none hear your call except those who believes in our sign and have sur- surrendered themselves to him jazakallah khair dr sufyan manawar the acquisition of knowledge is a prime obligation for all the human beings the holy quran emphasizes to read write research and explore the universe to see the signs of the almighty since the founding of the first overseas chapter of the institution of engineers pakistan in saudi arabia almost 32 years ago under the leadership of our co- former chairman engineer ismat amin khaja and the current chairman engineer rizwan ahmed ip focuses on engineering education science and technology knowledge sharing and holding technical seminars to build a better world our organization does not limit its reach to only pakistani engineers we also focus on engineers of other nationalities for their participation in our activities and to share their ideas and expertise all these activities are possible only by contribution continuous efforts 
commitment and dedication of all our council members and the support of our sponsors and the advertisers. IEP is very much grateful to all of them. We are confident that this webinar will give you an opportunity to understand today's challenges and find out the ways to meet the demands of the power sector and also the relevant fields through wind energy potential. Similarly, we are obtaining renewable energy through solar, hydro, geothermal and tidal, which are also called green energies. For the introduction of our speaker tonight, I would like to call upon Dr. Muhammad Farhan Bhatt, our executive council member, a very dynamic and versatile personality. He plays a leading role in organizing our webinars. Now to Mr. Muhammad Farhan Bhatt. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, uh, Mr. Abbani. Thank you very much. Uh, for uh, uh, for the details about the program, uh, today's program. Uh, I'm gonna cut to the chase. I will, uh, first of all, good evening to all of you guys. And I'm going to now invite uh, uh, Dr. Farooq Saeed. Before we do that, uh, I'm uh, going to uh, talk a little, uh, a little bit about uh, his experience. Dr. Farooq Saeed is an, uh, uh, is an associate professor of mechanical and energy engineering um, uh, department at Imam Abdul Rahman bin Faisal University. Um, and uh, he's a graduate of the University of Illinois at uh, Urbana-Champaign, USA, where he earned both his master's in 1993 and doctorate degree in aeronautical and uh, astronautical engineering. He received his Bachelor of Engineering in Aerospace with distinction from NED University from PF College Aeronautical of Aeronautical Engineering. He has over 22 years of experience in design of wind energy systems and development of industry standard codes for certification of wind energy and uh, aerospace, aerospace systems. He's actively involved in uh, research and has collaborated with the NASA Boeing, Bombardier uh, Aerospace, and uh, also a Bombardier Aerospace and MIT Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, King Abdullah City of uh, City for Science and Technology, CACS, and uh, several other organizations, including over 50 international wind energy uh, industry related organizations. Dr. Farooq holds eight US patents has uh, contributions in several books, including wind turbine design and has authored over 70 peer reviewed publications. Dr. Farooq Said. And uh, thank you, the, uh, <clears throat> the council members of the Institute of Engineers Pakistan and uh, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I will start uh, by saying Aslam uh, Alaikum. To start in the name of Allah. And <clears throat> I wish that uh, my talk today is very valuable uh, in terms of promoting 
wind energy. All right. <clears throat> so with that uh, brief introduction, I like to start off with some very interesting facts. And uh, I have uh, taken these facts from a online website. It's called World Ometer. And it has, uh, it gives us physics uh, numbers basically for, you know, various aspect, aspects of, uh, you can say, our lives. And I have uh, took, uh, taken a snapshot of two of these aspects that deal with energy and environment. And in particular, I would like to highlight uh, the statistics here to mention the days to the end of some of the resources. And you can see here, I have uh, highlighted oil, gas, which is natural gas, and coal. So according to these statistics, we have only 42 years left as far as the oil reserves are concerned. And for gas, about 150. Uh, in fact, the International Energy Association uh, also puts gas at about 50 years. Okay, that is the energy history. Now, as, as because of the use of this oil and gas and coal for our energy needs, we have also uh, done some damage to the environment. And you can see, just to get an idea, uh, on the right side, you have some figures uh, talking about the carbon dioxide emissions and also the toxic chemicals released in this environment. Okay, so what is the worst case scenario here? So if you are dependent upon energy, especially oil and gas, then the statistics tells us that we have 40 years reserves left. So the question that we have to have to ask, what is the alternative? And is there an alternative? And if yes, what are we doing about it? And I like to point this cartoon here. Uh, of course, uh, this is a responsibility for uh, that falls on all uh, upon all of us, and none of us can say that sure, glad the whole isn't at our end. We are all uh, part of this global society of this one Mother Earth, and we need to think seriously of uh, the alternative. All right, so with this. Uh, I would like to say, yes, we have an alternative, which is, which has come in, uh, in our lives as renewable energy. And but also what we need to do, uh, we need to be proactive. Uh, proactive in a sense that we promote uh, these ideas, we communicate these ideas um, to our fellow human beings, societies, uh, or in simple words, we need just we need to be proactive in order to support and save uh, this planet that we live on. And this is also for the uh, for our future generation. So today um, I will talk about wind power, which is uh, one of the you can say essential part of this whole renewable energy field or AEA. I will touch uh, briefly upon a, the history of wind power and then I will move over to power basics, um, how basically to estimate or assess the potential of wind power that we, we may have or uh, that we can use uh, and then we'll look at also give you an idea of the different technologies that exist today and what the future holds for us. And then from there on, I, I would switch over to uh, wind energy. 
Now, most of us, including me, are always confused about uh, power and energy. This is always puzzling. So, um, for example, uh, when we go and buy, I, I will try to explain maybe in very layman terms here. For example, I mean, oftentimes we, have, we go and buy a vacuum cleaner, right? So when we go there, what do we look for? Obviously, the first thing uh, that's on the mind of our wives is the power. It has to have lots of power. Okay. <clears throat> where on the, where all, whereas the husband looks into his pocket and says, oh, wait. Uh, I need to make sure that, you know, the, the, the cost is worth the power. So uh, obviously this, the suction power, this is the punch that the machine delivered. And so, uh, so that's why we use the power, we use the term power uh, in order to, uh, to estimate how much um, energy it can deliver. But when we, when it comes to the cost or the price, uh, we look at energy, uh, how much cost savings can we have by consuming this power. So there is a uh, fine line difference between. So I will switch over to wind energy. Uh, we'll talk about outlook, uh, the global outlook, how things are you know, developing in, in, the, in the world nowadays and what future holds for us. And then we'll look at the wind energy developments, um, not only around the world, but also we'll try to talk a little bit about the region, especially uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And, and then finally, uh, I will highlight some of the efforts that are being <coughs> taken in Pakistan. What's it? And then finally, I will summarize uh, this talk. Okay, so let me start by uh, looking at the history of wind turbine. And it, this is uh, this is something that's not new. If you uh, go online and uh, search for old windmills, you will find that there's uh, tons of these images that come up. Uh, with all kinds of uh, different types of wind turbines. And the slide that I'm showing you, it's just one example. And this is uh, uh, wind turbines. Uh, you actually see three different wind turbines here, uh, which are arranged in uh, if you look carefully, these are what we call the vertical axis. And we'll talk about this later in the talk also. Um, and especially this one has a description of the wind turbine along with this, uh, this image. And you can see that the inscription here uh, looks, uh, initially when I was looking for it, I, I was looking for Persian wheel mills, but it turns out that these are this inscription is in, actually in Arabic. So, uh, and um, this is, uh, if you do the search, they have different estimates. So we're looking at around 600 to 900 AD, uh, the era. And you see a lot of these types of wind, windmills uh, during that time. Now, so therefore this, Harvesting the wind power is not exactly a new new idea. It's been there for centuries, and people have exploited this uh, for different uses, uh, especially for grinding the grains. Okay. And here I'll show you some of the pictures. Here, this is the one on the right, the black and white or the gray. Uh, this is from Afghanistan, and this is uh, uh, 900 uh, AD. Uh, and then there's a, the one picture on the bottom, uh, there's a, a model. This is model is from some museum um, uh, display. It's a 
giving us details of the of the wind turbine. And there are some pictures also, and this is circa around 680. If you look carefully, you'll see, you'll be amazed that um, these guys knew the technology um, very well. Uh, basically, if you, if you look at, and I have drawn the uh, sketches from the top uh, showing the wind turbine, which is in green, uh, like a fan. So this is actually a vertical wind turbine. So we're looking from the top. And um, if you look at the enclosures, uh, they, ha they have built them very smartly. Uh, the wind turbine, as it rotates, uh, one half is what we call uh, the retreating blade. And one half is the advancing blade. The advancing blade is, is facing the, uh, is open to the air. Whereas the retreating blade, uh, that side has been blocked. So they really understood how to get the maximum uh, power from this. So they're blocking the wind uh, from hitting the, the uh, uh, retreating blade. And the second figure, the second sketch that I've drawn here uh, with a circular enclosure, you'll see that on the top, they have sort of a wedge or a convergent um, channel. So they also knew that you could increase the power by concentrating the wind, wind here. So looking at these images, you know, one is really amazed that, you know, the kind of technology or the understanding of the technology they had at that time. And we're looking at, you know, somewhere between 600 and 900 uh, in the past uh, millennium. And then we see, um, move on to the Middle Ages. Um, we see um, most prominent, uh, these Dutch uh, windmills uh, scattered all over Europe. And um, they, the idea came from sails uh, on the ships. <clears throat> and so they have exploited that idea to uh, build these wind turbines. And these wind turbines, uh, especially uh, the, the five on the bottom and the right, they are what we call the horizontal axis type wind turbines. And then we see in the 19th century, the, uh, the same technology which was used to grind mills is then slowly finds its way, uh, especially in the industrial revolution uh, to generate electrical power. So if you look at the the late or early 1900s, you'll see that the, the function or the utility of these wind power uh, turbines, wind turbine uh, uh, switches from being uh, mills used for grinding um, different grains to production of electricity. And you see them also at different scales. Uh, you have very small, uh, scale that you can use to charge your batteries. And then you have a very large scale, uh, almost uh, about 12 kilowatt uh, that you can generate. So uh, you can see that in, in, during the industrial revolution, uh, quite a advancement was made in these wind turbines. And then we move on to the modern era. Uh, we see very special uh, characteristics um, of the turbines, and we can, um, you know, associate this with the, some of the key attributes of this period. And these being, um, you know, economies of scale, so moving from single turbines to uh, farms, wind farms, uh, commercialization, uh, competitiveness, um, and then merge with you no, know, a lot of advancement in other technologies, and then also this concept of grid integration. So this um, modern ha era helped really improve the quality of life uh, because of these certain attributes. And obviously there were drivers, uh, they were driven by, uh, you know, major events in our, uh, in the time, in the 19th or in the 20th century, uh, 
the main one being the OPEC oil crisis in the 70s. And then, um, you know, um, economies opting for energy independence, um, concern for environment, uh, and then also innovation just to get the maximum that we can drive from a uh, technology. And then also um, to be able to mass produce uh, the concept of standardization also uh, was a key driver in uh, you know, paving the way for this technology to be um, very common. Uh, in this picture, I, I've shown wind farms here. The, the top one is, uh, is the, uh, what we call, what is commonly um, known to everyone as the horizontal axis turbine. And the bottom one is the vertical axis. Uh, so these are the modern ones. And you can see if you go back earlier in the 20th century, you'll see um, uh, wind turbines very similar to the one on the right and you can see the structure here is the is basically driven is taken from these electrical towers <clears throat> all right so <clears throat> so where does this power actually comes from uh, so let me uh, go back to a little basics and then we'll come back to the technology again um, as you know, uh, you'll be, I mean, it's not surprising, and I, I hope everybody knows that the, the source for wind power is our sun as well. Not only do we derive solar power from it, but the wind power is also as a result of this resource that we have. And how this works is you can see uh, this image on the right is. <laughs> as showing us the temperature variation uh, on the surface of the earth uh, over the over the time of year and you can see uh, the red areas are where the temperatures are very high uh, where the blue areas are the ones that are uh, relatively colder so it is this difference in temperature that basically creates uh, uh, the temperature uh, uh, basically uh, drives the air circulation in the globe. Okay. So, and another thing that helps in this whole, um, uh, we can say, circulation is the rotation of the Earth also. And if you can imagine if the Earth did not rotate, um, uh, drafts would rise up uh, around the equator and they will travel towards the north or the south pole. And then uh, simply as they get cooler, they will uh, drop. So you'll see the circular pattern, but nothing horizontal or near. Uh, <clears throat> so the good part is that the uh, rotation of the earth helps generate a very specific uh, wind patterns all across the globe. And <clears throat> these uh, wind patterns, we, we turn them as geostropic winds. And uh, they are the ones that what we call lead to the prevailing wind conditions. And they are very, you know, they are set. Uh, and you can see in this image here. Um, uh, so you have the image of the Earth. Uh, it's divided at the equator, and we have the two tropics, uh, one in the north and one in the south at 30 degree um, uh, longitude. And then we have another um, uh, division here at 60 degree latitude. And we see that um, because of the rotation and this temperature variation, the, the wind, they form very distinct uh, these patterns here, circular patterns between the equator and the, the different tropics. And, uh, and, and they, because of this rotation, they also have very specific and distinct directions. Uh, so, you know, the, we call these westerlies or uh, trade winds. So, so this is a, 
a very set pattern and therefore the amount of wind that's present uh, at a location, especially the geostrophic, uh, geostrophic winds, uh, it's already known. It's the term, I mean, it's, it's fixed kind of thing. The only thing that prevents our, uh, the only thing different here is that these are very high level winds and they're away from the surface. Um, the surface winds, which actually help us in estimating or assessing the uh, wind energy potential, um, are mostly influenced by the, the local conditions, the lay of the land, the topology, the, uh, you know, uh, the construction, um, and so on and so forth. So the first step in um, sort of estimating what kind of wind power is available um, is to have some layer of the wind resource availability. And nowadays it's very common to find these uh, resources online. And as an example, I have, uh, I'm showing this as an example. Uh, this is uh, taken from a website and it's, it's giving us the wind speed um, uh, intensity, you can say, um, at different uh, heights here. So we're looking at offshore, which would be sea level, uh, then 100 meters and 400 meters. Uh, the geostrophic winds that I was talking about, they, they top up at about 1,000 meters. So anything below 1,000 meters is, is then the uh, influence by the local condition. Okay. Right. So, for in order to you know make full use of this resource, wind resource, we need to have an idea of what kind of resource the the wind, uh, you can say wind speed or wind power that's available at the location. Another thing I so we have these resources; they are abundantly available everywhere, and uh, everybody has access to it. The thing that I wanted to point out here is, if you look at the, the uh, when it comes to offshore, uh, you can see the offshore um, resource is much greater than onshore, and this is, you know, this is very logical because there is uh, there is no obstruction uh, in the seas, and so the, the wind when it pick, starts to pick up, uh, it it just keeps going. And that's why uh, uh, you'll see that a lot of effort nowadays is on what we call offshore wind. And I will talk about this later as well. Okay. So once uh, we have an estimate of the wind resource, uh, we can do a, a quick uh, estimate of the wind power that's available. And I present here a very simple uh, expression or equation uh, that you can use as a layman to estimate the, the power uh, available in the wind or the wind power potential at a location. Um, I will not go into the details of this equation. Uh, the important thing here is that this power depends on the square of the the size of the wind turbine, size in terms of the diameter. And also it depends on the cube of the velocity or the wind speed at that location. So as a guiding principle, we see that the, the wind resource, uh, the, the, the wind speed uh, velocity is more important than the, the size. So here size, Size actually matters, uh, uh, but the more important is the, the wind velocity. So I have given you uh, here uh, the equation, uh, just a, a chart here so you can get an estimate of the, and again, this is the theoretical power. You need to uh, think of the efficiency of the system, um, not only uh, the mechanical system, the electrical system, but also the, the third, turbine itself. So uh, one of the key things here is, if you notice, uh, I have put here CP. This is 
what we call the power coefficient of the wind turbine. And this is a function of the design. Okay. Um, so uh, you can design a wind turbine to give you a certain power coefficient. And uh, this next slide, I present a, a, a chart here that you can use to estimate uh, roughly the power coefficient for different types of turbines. And I will talk a little bit of these different turbines later in the talk, but uh, you've seen the, the horizontal axis, which is uh, hot, H-A-W-T, this is the horizontal axis or the fan side. And then we have the vertical axis, which is uh, sometimes we call the egg beater type. So you have the, uh, the egg beater for your omelets and stuff. And if you look at the chart, um, you'll see that the, the highest coefficient, uh, this uh, power coefficient uh, is for the horizontal axis wind turbine. And this is the curve, um, uh, if I can point this, it's right here uh, in the chart. Obviously, the, the, the topmost line here, it says uh, it, the ideal case, and you know this is uh, only uh, for the uh, for books, uh, in reality, we have uh, the actual uh, power coefficient uh, is some somewhat much lower than the theoretical limits here. Uh, but we see that the, the horizontal axis wind turbine tops this list. Uh, the next is the vertical axis, and then there are others, uh, multi blade type, uh, Savonius, and then we also have the Dutch. Uh, on the bottom here. And what's on the X axis is what we call the width, uh, turbine blade tip speed ratio. This is, this is the ratio of the blade uh, tip speed to the wind speed. Um, so they are, you see that another thing is that, that these different turbines, uh, they have an optimum uh, blade tip speed ratio for operation. All right, so uh, without uh, going into further detail, uh, this is, if you have this, uh, you can do a quick estimate of the power uh, that's available at a site. Uh, how do we know that uh, the power that we have is, is good, excellent, or poor? Uh, for this, we use a term, what we call power, wind power density. And this is again derived from the same equation. Uh, it's just we divide the power by the the area. The area here refers to the area of the turbine, or the what we call the swept area of the turbine. This is the area of the turbine um, of the turbine blade as it sweeps, uh, you know, in uh, 360 degrees. Uh, so a good mayor of uh, um, to get a good idea of what the, the resource is good, um, we use, uh, we, we calculate, we can calculate the wind power density with the information that I've presented in the last two slides. And uh, a good uh, measure of uh, wind power is uh, about 400 watts per meter square. So if you, if you look at the wind side and you estimate that this is this wind power density is about 400 or higher. Uh, this should tell you that you have a very good wind resource, and it's worth uh, exploiting that. Uh, perhaps thinking of you know, installing wind turbine. And this, uh, if you want to translate this, this translates to about a, a wind speed of about between seven to eight meters per second. So if you have that at a location, um, you are, um, you know, uh, you're all set for the wind resource. Uh, the next slide here, I, I'm presenting. This is uh, we have a, there's a website it's called Global Wind Atlas, and the the image here is for our local region. Um, it's clearly showing Saudi Arabia and uh, Pakistan and, you know, in between. Um, so 
like I said, there's, uh, there, there are plenty of sites that, that can provide you these uh, wind power density or wind speed information uh, that you can uh, use for, um, for estimating the, the wind potential or the power potential that's, that's available on the site. And you can see here the potential here, um, uh, Saudi Arabia, anything light green uh, in yellow and above uh, exhibits uh, excellent wind resource. Uh, and you, you can see that there is plenty of this, especially uh, in, the, in the lower part of this peninsula uh, uh, around Oman and you know, parts of Yemen and then uh, down in the North Africa, uh, Ethiopia and all these areas. Uh, but also uh, you can see that Pakistan, especially uh, the Sindh and the Balochistan, the, the, the south southern part is also uh, very good, has very good potential um, for wind power. The next slide, this is uh, the, the last one was the uh, wind power density and this is in terms of wind speed and again here anything yellow and above uh, means that you have an excellent resource for um, uh, wind, wind energy or wind power. Okay, so this is as far as, um, you know, this is the, the basics uh, that you need to know in order to uh, have an idea of what kind of wind power is available and whether it's worth uh, investing in, um, you know, installing uh, wind turbines in the area. Uh, so let's now talk about the, the different technologies here. Oh, before I go there, there's one important aspect that uh, almost forgot. So this, uh, in this uh, uh, slide, um, we're talking about, again, wind resource assessment, uh, but uh, before we actually do this, we need to do a survey of the, of the, of the land and make sure that, you know, we avoid the obstruction. So here, uh, let me just run this again. You see the three turbines in the and the video clip here, uh, one of them is not moving. And uh, this is not, uh, this was reported by the Danish uh, Wind Energy Association. The first one is not moving, not because of some malfunction. It's not moving because of the, the force in front. The force did not. Okay. Um, so you need to, you know, think about uh, before you develop, you need to make sure that the, instruct, uh, the, 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 the area is clear of obstructions. And uh, not only that, uh, the area can also give you a, you know, visual clues about wind directions and the, um, uh, and the wind speed. And there are different scales here. I, I'm showing some of the images and you can look at the the, the trees, the inclination of the trees, uh, and the branches here. So they they can give you very good clues about what kind of wind. Uh, do we have plenty of wind, or is it just you know uh, normal? So, uh, and then on the bottom, I uh, I'm I'm trying to also show here that um, let's say if you have all these obstructions, and you know this is something that you have to deal with then one thing you want to make sure is that what we call the hub height. The hub height of the turbine is where, uh, which is where we connect the, uh, the rotor to the, uh, to the generator and all the other systems. So the hub height along with the, the rotors, they should be clear of what we call the, the surface bound layer. Surface bound layer, this is the, the, uh, the the flow or the pattern that's generated right above the surface of the uh, of the earth considering the different uh, obstructions on the surface so this is also very important uh, not only just the estimate of the wind resource but also you know uh, the location itself a survey of the location and looking at all possible obstacles to the, the wind 
All right. So with that said, let's. Uh, uh, I'd like to move on to the different technologies here. Uh, so as as we saw in uh, many slides, and uh, you are probably familiar with um, this particular type of wind turbine. Um, it's a sometimes we call this the fan type. Uh, this is the, the technical name is horizontal axis wind turbine. And these are very common. Uh, you see them scattered all over, especially if you fly over to, to Europe. Um, but, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, there are different variations and one particular variation here uh, I've shown is what, what they call the multi-rotor configuration. This is the figure in the uh, the image in the in the middle, and you can see in order to uh, exploit uh, or save the space here, uh, they have mounted four wind turbines on a single tower. Um, and I also wanted to highlight uh, GE just uh, uh, they started operating one of the biggest wind turbines um, in, in world today. Uh, it's called Halle X, uh, which is a 12 megawatt wind turbine. So this is one of the biggest uh, typical wind turbines uh, range from between one or two megawatts. But this machine is 12 megawatt. And to give you an idea of the size of this turbine, you, there's an image here that shows a comparison of this turbine, uh, you know, uh, uh, as we look at Eiffel Tower or the Empire State Building. And so this is almost uh, close to the, the Eiffel Tower, right? The, the blades, blades are, each blade is, uh, is 220 meters. And together, uh, the whole diameter is about, uh, sorry, uh, it's close to 200. So together, uh, the diameter is, uh, sorry, the diameter is 220. The hub height is about 260 meters. So you can imagine. Uh, and you can also imagine that uh, most of these blades are being transported as a single uh, item. And so you can imagine that, you know, the, the transportation or the logistics aspect of these turbines. And, and you know, all the technologies are, are being developed as a result of this. Uh, the other type of uh, technology that's not very common uh, is the vertical axis wind turbine. And uh, uh, this also has its what we call niche. Uh, you can see that the horizontal axis wind turbine, you need to face it into the wind in order to extract the maximum power. Uh, the vertical axis wind turbine, on the other hand, has this omnidirection characteristic that it can make use of wind uh, from any direction. So you don't need to direct this uh, turbine into the wind to, to be able to extract the maximum power. And then you see there are many variations. Some are here on the top. I've shown they're exploiting the, the turbulence on the highway. You see them here. This is a configuration that, uh, although it's horizontal, but it's still spinning about an axis. Uh, I've seen in Europe they 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 have them also. Oh. All right. So, uh, and then uh, if you go into look now, um, what we have what we call building integrated technologies. And a perfect example of this is right in our backyard here in Bahrain. Uh, this is the Bahrain Trade uh, World Trade Center building. It houses three uh, turbines. Each is about 225 kilowatts. Um, produces about three, uh, power about 225 kilowatts. And, and so this is also not very uncommon nowadays. Uh, we see them and they exploit the different uh, things such as uh, venturi effect, uh, the acceleration of the wind, 
on the windward side of the building on the edge. So uh, as shown here, uh, the, the wind, there's a boost to the wind and therefore uh, these technologies they exploit that. Uh, here are some examples of another, some examples of building integrated technologies. Again, they exploit uh, this, the fact that the wind around corners accelerates and therefore uh, is a good resource for wind energy. All right, so, uh, so there are a lot of different technologies and because of the time, uh, it's hard to highlight this, but let's move on to uh, what is the installed capacity in the world nowadays. Um, the uh, capacity here is a chart of the five, top five countries with net installed capacities. Um, and you can see that China has surpassed US uh, not only in uh, wind, but also in solar and many of the other roads. And um, it's generating uh, uh, about, it's not generating, the installed capacity is about 30% as compared to the entire world. Uh, Pakistan sits somewhere uh, uh, very low or about 0.2%. Okay, so, uh, that was as far as the technologies. Let's look at the what is the outlook. Uh, we see currently that um, the non-renewable energy sources they account for almost 90% of the uh, global energy consumption. Uh, the renewable uh, are only about 10 to 11%. But this is uh, this is certainly is going to change uh, over the over the course of uh, the next decade. Uh, currently, the renewables have about 27% uh, share in the global electricity production. Uh, the global wind power capacity is about almost 650 gigawatts. Um, and currently, um, again, based on different sources, the wind power uh, is still one of the the lowest uh, uh, has the lowest generation cost uh, among the different renewable uh, energy sources. Uh, here's a trend for uh, the power generation costs cost here for uh, the solar and and the wind. Um, uh, the the yellow uh, lines they indicate these are the the PV the photovoltaic and the concentrated solar. Uh, and then the blue and the uh, the day are the onshore and offshore when and you can see that uh, these are uh, you know uh, they're they're comparable basically to the hydro which is one of the lowest at the moment uh, I've also given here estimate from the US Department of Energy um, again you know we're looking if you compare it with coal uh, or nuclear, nuclear is about 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, <clears throat> so wind and solar, according to them, they're about 3.7, about 4 cents to kilowatt hour. So the generation costs are also an incentive for this. Um, so I will skip to some of this, uh, these slides. Uh, uh, here's the uh, a map of the electricity generation from wind in um, 2020. And you can see that again, uh, not only the installation capacity, but also in generation China tops the list, uh, almost 30% of the uh, generation electricity generated in the world from renewable is, uh, is in China. And we see also, we see that the, the top five countries, they, they're essentially the same countries that are also on the top five list of installation capacity, except for UK here. Uh, moving on to the, the region, Saudi Arabia, as we all know, has announced plans for a very um, elaborate um, plan to integrate renewable energy in its uh, electricity production. Um, the 
Division 2030 lays it out clearly. Um, they have uh, planned a capacity for 35 plus parts, both solar and wind. And uh, especially the wind, uh, they plan to. Currently, Saudi Arabia, uh, if you look at the, the last one, you can see Saudi Arabia, uh, the generation is almost 0.01%. Uh, obviously, this will change uh, over this decade. They have plans for installing almost uh, uh, the target is 16 gigawatt by 2030. Uh, Pakistan also has a very good potential. And um, uh, I have taken this uh, data from two different sites uh, just to give you an idea. Um, so the, the, the chart on the left is from the world uh, wind data, global wind data. Uh, it gives us the mean wind speed distribution. We can see the areas that are, you know, green and above are excellent source for uh, wind energy. And on the right hand side, this is uh, the chart that was uh, given by IRENA, which is the International Renewable Air Energy Agency. And it, it gives us the distribution of the wind uh, power density uh, according to the land, proportion of the land. So if you can do a quick math here, uh, uh, it tells us that Pakistan has currently a capacity, wind power capacity that can generate four times the global uh, electricity or that can uh, basically cover four times the global electricity demand right now. Okay. And therefore, yeah, we have a lot of potential. Pakistan has lots of potential. The only thing left is how do we materialize this potential into, uh, a, you know, um, that's useful. Um, and for that, uh, there's a lot of effort that's going on, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, from the federal government side. Uh, they have uh, they have this alternate and renewable energy policy that have uh, highlighted in 2019, and that clearly lays out very specific targets, uh, like and they call this 20 by 25 and 30 by 30, 30 uh, which basically uh, says that we would like to generate 20% of electricity uh, from renewable uh, by 2025 uh, 20, and about 30% uh, by 2030. And not only this, they, they have, uh, they have uh, started mechanism for uh, inviting not only foreign but local uh, you know, companies, industries, and they are giving them a lot of incentives um, and um, they have laid out very extensive uh, rules and regulations uh, to facilitate the development and uh, you know um, uh, generation capacity uh, in Pakistan. Um, we have the uh, uh, also the Alternate Energy Development Board, uh, which is the sole body that's responsible for uh, for this effort. And they have been directed to electrify almost 8,000 remote villages in Sindh and Balochistan um, through the renewable energy technologies. And they have engaged with there are more than 20 local what we call IPPs or independent power uh, producers in various phases of implementing, commissioning, and operation of wind energy related projects. Okay. So the, the, there's uh, there's very good promise in Pakistan. And this is also, uh, you can say, uh, there's a lot of international cooperation that's going on. Um, USAID, uh, IRENA, uh, uh, United Nations Industrial Development Bank, the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, and German Corporation in particular, they are aiding uh, these agencies, uh, especially AEDB, in promotion and also, uh, you know, the financial aid uh, in order to uh, help uh, relieve Pakistan from this, uh, the energy crisis. All right. 
And when, um, as an example, I, I show here uh, the first, uh, uh, you can say, first uh, of these projects. This is the uh, the IPP here is the Foundation Wind Energy uh, Limited. Uh, they have developed two farms um, in a location uh, in Sin. Uh, this is Kutikon uh, uh, in the Kutta district. Um, there are two plant projects. Uh, uh, the Foundation Wind Energy Limited one, and then there's a two each uh, is uh, supposed to generate 50 megawatt and <clears throat> using about 40 turbines. So each location uh, in order to uh, <clears throat> so this is a, the, there are a lot of these examples that one finds and uh, it's very promising to see that uh, Pakistan embarked on uh, the road uh, of renewables. Uh, it has also established a Pakistan Council of Renewable Energy Technology under the Ministry of Science and Technology. And their mandate is to do conduct research, uh, indigenous development system design, uh, capacity building in terms of you know training and technical uh, promotion and dissemination of uh, technologies and testing qualification uh, of the different uh, focus areas. Okay, so with this, uh, I would like to end and, uh, you know, at the end, I would just like to summarize uh, uh, in a few points. Uh, I think uh, almost all of us are familiar with wind energy where it's not something foreign to us. We know that it reduces pollution, reduces our energy dose, our costs, and provides thousands of jobs. And as such can have a tremendous uh, impact on quality of life. Uh, the global wind potential if realized can provide electricity for over a million times the current demand. As I showed you that Pakistan alone has the potential to cover about four times the global electricity uh, demand. Um, and we see that a lot of countries are making a lot of efforts, especially uh, when you look at the news, uh, Europe is, uh, is going totally, uh, wants to be independent from oil by the end of uh, this or next decade. And therefore, you know, uh, it's, and you know, the, at the end, I would say that it's not just a, you know, somebody's effort, it's the individual collective effort that, that can really, you know, uh, take this, especially the, the, the global uh, environment and pollution, everything, take us out from that and you know, put us back in a, uh, in a very, uh, you can say, promising and sustainable future. So with that, I, I thank uh, thank for your uh, patience, uh, and I thank the committee for organizing and giving me this opportunity. Um, so uh, I will end by this uh, statement from our Qaidi Azim Muhammad Ali Jinnah, uh, which he made uh, on the uh, independence of Pakistan. It says, nature has given you everything. You have got unlimited resources. The foundations of your state have been laid, and it is now for you to build and build as quickly and as well as you can. So, with that, I, I thank everybody. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions. Thank you, uh, Dr. Farooq. Uh, it was, uh, I must say that it was a powerful presentation uh, about uh, power and energy and uh, facts and, uh, and a lot of useful information that we could learn. I think that's the beauty of these uh, webinars and seminars that we unlearn the processes that we need to unlearn and learn new things which needs to be learned, which need to be learned. So, so I think that this process is amazing and I think must continue and we thank you very much for, for this uh, uh, a great uh, presentation uh, full of information. While 
you know, we had we have received a lot of questions, um, and I'm not sure, keeping uh, the time limitations in view, how many of those we could ask. But we'll start anyway, as soon as possible. Uh, there's a, a question, rather a comment from Canada, uh, Mr. Javed uh, from Canada, Javed Nasser. He uh, uh, appreciated this presentation and also he wanted to get the information. I would like to take this opportunity to inform you that yes, we will share this presentation with all of the attendees, and uh, soon in coming days you will you will know about that. Uh, we will uh, also post the video of this presentation as well. Uh, with that, I think I'll go to the uh, questions now. Um, there is a question. Um, by Mr. Uh, Jawad Bhatt. Uh, the question is, what wind power plants exist in KSA uh, or are they in pipeline? Okay. <clears throat> so I, I sort of brushed this through the, in my presentation, but you will see that um, uh, I have listed a few projects here. Uh, in 2017 at Parade, uh, they installed the first uh, turbine. It's a 2.7 megawatt uh, the GE General Electric wind turbine that went operational. But this was only for the, I, I guess, for the local Aramco facility, uh, uh, their energy need. Uh, then in 2019, they have uh, they have already given this. They have signed this con a contract with Mazda, which is based in the United Arab Emirates. The company that's going to install a uh, 400 megawatt farm. Uh, this is going to be Saudi's first and the largest in the Middle East. Uh, it consists about 99 units of Vestas, uh 4.2 megawatt turbine. So this is much bigger. So this is the uh, current status uh, as I as I know of. Um, so uh, there is another interesting question by Mr. by Engineer Khuram uh, Zaman, Munawar Zaman. Uh, sorry about that. So uh, uh, Engineer Munawar Zaman, why are always three blades? Can we increase the uh, number to increase wind intensity? Okay, yes, uh, that's a very good question. And I'm glad somebody notices. Yes, uh, uh, so there's a lot of physics here. Uh, just to make it very simple. Yes, the, the, the three blade geometry has been found to be the most optimal. You could generate the, the with a four or higher number of blades, but then the, the, the cost uh, basically overruns the uh, you can say the benefit here and so the you know that's why you see the standard three blade uh, as uh, you know sort of standard everywhere
Okay. Okay. Um, uh, we apologize for this technical glitch. There was a uh, uh, called a technical issue, and uh, we are back now. Uh, so I will continue with the next question. With uh, uh, you know, uh, so the next question is uh, by Mr. by Engineer uh, Muhammad Shami. Is there any re uh, renewable energy policy, especially for wind energy, issued recently by Pakistan government? How they are encouraging the wind energy? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, there is. Like I said, there is a concentrated effort uh, by the federal government, and they have released this uh, alternative and renewable energy policy in 2019. And um, you know, I highlight here some of the uh, you can say <clears throat> their targets uh, and another thing. That they are trying to do is okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so we'll talk about the. There are a lot of incentives from the federal government. They have established a body. Actually, the body has been there, but they have given it uh, more powers. To actually execute these projects on renewable energy technology is different. Uh, they have been mandated to electrify almost 8,000 uh, villages in Blochistan and Sim. And, uh, and also, uh, the policy highlights, you know, the, 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 the standards or, you know, the uh, protocols for uh, competitive bidding. Um, uh, displacement of you know old energy or the existing and energy uh, uh, development within the the country uh, in, uh, so indigenous uh, development and, and also uh, they're working on the contracts with the regulatory and uh, the frameworks for contracts with the company uh, just to uh, make them simple uh, and you know sort of uh, as an incentive for companies to engage in this. And there are also a lot of effort towards renewable energy uh, training and skill development. So the, the body that's responsible for this is the AEDB, like I said, uh, Ultimate Energy Development uh, Board. And so you can find a lot of information if you go on their website, they, uh, most of this information that I've presented is uh, from their sources. Okay, uh, thanks, Dr. Borough. I have uh, uh, two more questions, possibly three, but uh, I'm going to go with uh, two more questions, and then we'll see if we have in, uh, enough time left. Then we'll ask for them. So the for, uh, the next question is by uh, Engineer Khalid. Uh, what is the total uh, world power generation? Uh, in total world power generation, what is the share of uh, wind power? And how about Saudi Arabia? What is the share of wind power in Saudi Arabia? And okay, uh, I presented in the slide here the the renewable share of of the global electricity production is right now about twenty seven percent, out of which only six percent is provided by the the wind energy. So that's the global statistic. Okay. okay. And what is the share oh, in Saudi? Saudi? Saudi is just stepping into the renewable. Uh, I've been here almost 18 years, and I remember when I first came, uh, I was trying to, you know, support this idea, but the the cost factor was still in favor of oil, especially in out Saudi Arabia. But now the tables are turning, and so you know they, and also the fact that they have realized that this oil is not a permanent resource. So they, they need to start looking at alternate uh, energy sources. So uh, at this, uh, this, this is, I showed the, uh, uh, here, here you can see the, it puts, this is the electricity generation from wind and uh, terawatt hour, Saudi Arabia about 0 0.01 as compared to China, which is about 406. So, you know, this is only because Saudi Arabia, you know, some of these countries are what we call late bloomers. So, uh, but uh, I think they have policies and they have the capability to perform 
out and go very far and get okay, really have, soon. Thanks. Uh, we have another uh, interesting question by engineer Khalid bin Zafar. And uh, by the way, I share the same uh, academic curiosity about this uh, concern that you mentioned uh, there's a potential in Pakistan for around four times uh, as much. But uh, but uh, uh, the question is that uh, as we speak, there is only one corridor, uh, potential corridor, which is in Jampir, uh, around Jampir area. So in Sin. Okay. So uh, how could you please explain us how you know, yes. we got there? And okay. So uh, uh, you need to have this slide. I don't know if you can see it. But you need to see this is uh, in the presentation. I have the map of Pakistan. This is a wind resource that's available uh, from the global wind site. And then uh, Arena, they have given us a table in which it shows us the distribution of this wind power resource uh, as a function of the percent of land. Right? So if you take this wind power source and you can use the, the area, you know, wind. Uh, wind power density is watts per meter square. Uh, you multiply by the area of Pakistan or the percentage area for different resource, uh, you get this number of almost 45 terawatts uh, uh, of uh, wind power. And that's, uh, that's four, uh, four times in terms of the, the, the global demand at present. So it's a, uh, if you have the size you look, uh, it's a very simple basic math. Uh, uh, so, you know, it uh, doesn't need, need uh, too much. Okay, so uh, I think this is, this is going to be our last question and uh, after that we'll move on to the program. Uh, the last question is by Mr. Anwar, Engineer Anwar, uh, says, uh, I'm going to read it as is. Presenter has mentioned the optimum wind velocity of six to nine uh, uh, for for proposed site location. What is the minimum time duration for this velocity over the year to make project feasible? Like many, like uh, maybe eight to nine, uh, etc. Over the year, please advise. Okay. Uh, so uh, there are two things here. One is the resource availability. And then uh, the other thing is the actual, uh, you can say, uh, extraction of the resource, right? And we have a factor we call this as capacity factor. So if you if you, if you look at wind farms or uh, they always list the capacity factor. So capacity factor is is at the actual wind energy or the power that you can extract at the site, and it depends on a lot of things. The local conditions. Obviously, the, the wind uh, has a certain distribution, you know, from uh, day to night and from month to month and season to season, right? So there is a variable key in, uh, in, the, in this wind. Uh, uh, so when we do this estimate, this is uh, looking at the, the maximum potential that you can have. Obviously, this is not the typical uh, capacity factors are about 30%. So you can translate this 30% of, uh, of this uh, 45 terawatt uh, that that we will be able to, uh, you know, that's what energy or power we will be able to extract from the sun. Okay. So the, the, the key thing when they, they install these uh, uh, or do the assessment, uh, we also talk about the capacity factor for that site. And that capacity factor is the actual layer of what is the actual production, uh, let's say, in terms of electricity from a turbine. So turbine could be uh, three megawatts, but 30% uh, means that we'll be using, uh, actually using only one megawatt of that, you know, because of the, uh, the wind, prevailing winds and conditions. So, um, well, with this, uh, uh, we, we, we have to con conclude the you know, two day two question and answer session, uh, keeping in view the limitation of time. Uh, so we thank you 
uh, very much, uh, Dr. Farooq Said. And here, uh, you know, I would like to reiterate that uh, we received so many interesting questions. And no doubt, uh, you know, we, we wanted to ask all of those questions to Dr. Said. Uh, but I assure you that we will uh, draft a communique and we will not uh, leave him alone, especially because uh, we work in the same college. So I'm going to personally approach him afterwards and get answer to those questions. And then we will we'll develop this community and uh, and maybe uh, we'll find a way. Maybe we'll just post it uh, on YouTube, all those uh, answers, and, and so that you know this information gets to you in timely fashion. So once again, thank you very much. Thank and you. we move on to our uh, next uh, uh, to the so we move on to the next uh, 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 part of our program. So I'm going to uh, again uh, request uh, Engineer Akbani to please uh, uh, come to the podium and, and uh, uh, proceed to the next part of our program. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum once again. Thank you, Dr. Farooq Saeed for an excellent, very informative, and very interesting presentation. You all must have uh, heard this phrase, gone with the wind. But here tonight, our speaker, he came in with the wind. <laughs> he has rightly highlighted some significant weakness in Pakistan a comprehensive approach and national coordination is vital for renewable energy deployment in Pakistan. We should honor our international commitment around the climate changes, efforts to decarbonize the power system in Pakistan and develop a strategic plan over the renewable energy to improve the cost of electric power generation, which is essential for economic development. Also, thanks to Dr. Muhammad Farhan Bhatt for conducting the question and answer session. We also appreciate everyone for your time and your uh, presence to make this event a great success. Indeed, it was a great success when we see the questions, interesting questions and interactions, so we can claim that it was a very interesting and very successful uh, webinar. Please be informed that a recorded version of this webinar will be available. Whoever is interested, kindly contact Dr. Muhammad Farhan Bhatt. It gives me immense pleasure to call upon a great person, a man of vision, our IAP chairman of Eastern Province, Engineer Rizwan Ahmed, for the vote of thanks and closing remarks and for the presentation of the mementos to Mr. Rizwan Ahmad. Currently he is in Bahrain and we are trying to connect him here. Then he will uh, address to you. Thank you. Ji. Akbani sahab, mujhe umiyad hai, aap sun sakte honge. Hello. Yes, we can hear. Ji. Yes, please go ahead. please go Thank you, Engineer Abdul Qadir Rakhbani, sir, Master of Ceremony of today's event. 
for very professional professionally conducting this event and especially uh, keeping the time time management very close what we planned gentlemen first of all i would like to pray for our very dear brother and colleague ex ip sec council member engineer farooq sheikh who passed away few days back in lahore due to corona virus he was a role model humble and very modest person वे सूरतें इलाही किस मुल्क बस्तियां हैं वे सूरतें इलाही किस मुल्क बस्तियां हैं अब देखने के जिनको आंखें तरसतियां हैं अल्लाह ताला उन्हें गरी की रहमत करे कमिंग टू द टॉपिक प्रोफेसर फारूक सईद टुडेज स्पीकर वेरी लर्नड स्पीकर एज वेरी वेल टेकन अस थ्रू पावर ऑफ विंड एनर्जी यूजेज from ancient era to today's modern one we are going back to nature and appreciating to use it for alternate energy means may it be wind or solar it was very useful presentation to refresh and enhance our knowledge thank you dr farooq said once again our local council members have worked very hard to make it happen successfully like always i am very grateful to all of them gentlemen our brother engineer mohammad karim ip ssc ep council member is moving to lahore he is very dedicated hard working we will miss him a lot and we pray that for his future endeavors wherever he go may allah bless him with success sound health anyway nowadays uh, nothing is far we will be in touch inshallah but on the other hand we welcome professor farhan but of imam abdul rahman bin faisal tamam university who recently joined ipep as council member mashallah he is very energetic professional and we are very fortunate to have him with us and we are utilizing his services and we are looking forward to have a couple of more uh fresh entries inshallah uh gentlemen we are grateful to our sponsors and advertisers for their continued support and our brothers in jordanian engineers association especially dr abdul karim jabari who are always participating and supporting us i would like to thank all participants who joined us tonight not only from kingdom of saudi arabia bahrain pakistan but also from canada and usa and looking forward to see you soon in another webinar inshallah advance ramadan kareem we pray to stay safe during this difficult time of pandemic with sound health and all over the globe thank you all once again and at the last as you know that we have the tradition to present memento shields to its speakers and to our uh, special members so this time i would request uh, engineer abdul qadir akwani that we have three shields uh, one for dr farooq said uh and the, i request dr abdul karim jawali to give him uh engineer abdul karim who is leaving uh engineer tariq bin zafar i request him uh to give him the shield and the third one our very active dynamic and versatile 
council member engineer Muhammad Munawar Uzama, regional manager of Keller. And I would request, uh, today we have opportunity with us, Dr. Professor Khalid al Mas, uh, with us, uh, who is being named one of the world's top 20% of scientists in global list of released by Stanford University. So we take his presence and please uh, give the shield to uh, engineer Munawar Zama. So I hand over now uh, to our own world. And thank you very much. Salah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I respect and request our Tariq bin Zafar, our senior executive member. He will present this shield to our, uh, as a farewell, our living uh, member is going to Pakistan. Now we request uh, Dr. Khalid Almaz, please come over here and hand over this uh, shield to our executive council member for the appreciation for his hard work. So please. Yes. <laughs> With this, we conclude our uh, today's webinar. And uh, anything else? Okay, Mr. Rizwan, he will give some uh, closing words. Again to Mr. Engineer Rizwan. This is one way we can hear you. Please go ahead. This is one way we can hear you. Please go ahead. Gigi, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I really, we are really on behalf, I on behalf of IPSEC Eastern Province, grateful to all the participants who joined us. Uh, globally, and without your participation, it we we cannot consider it successful, and we are encouraged by your participation. And a special thanks again for Dr. Farhan Bhatt, Dr. Uh, our learned speaker, uh, Farooq Saeed, uh, Engineer Akbani and the rest of our council members. Thank you very much. We appreciate your hard work and looking forward to see you again, inshallah, uh, soon in a, another webinar or seminar. With these words, once again, I thank all of you and my salam. The Agwan is over to you. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, all the past, uh, sorry, the, uh, so, so thank you very much again. And uh, again, we'll meet on the same platform for the
some other subjects and we hope we will provide you the technical information and we'll continue uh, what we are doing thank you very much